Knights of the Brunton from my first video. Now we're going to talk about how to use the Brunton. So uh, we're using this chalkboard as our 3D uh, surface. It's a flat surface and it's got a tilt. It's not horizontal, it's not vertical, it's at an angle. Um, so we will use strike and dip to measure the angle and orientation of this surface. Um, so the strike is the intersection of the horizontal plane with that surface. So I'm going to use this notebook as a horizontal plane. And when that intersects that surface, you're going to get a line. Horizontal means parallel with the horizon, right? It's always going to be flat like a table or the floor or the ceiling. It's sometimes hard to visualize what that is in the field. And that's why the Brunton has levels. So uh, you won't always be able to draw on the rock surface, but if you get the flat side of the Brunton to hit the rock surface, then, then you just focus in on the circular bubble level until you get that bubble in the center. And that tells you that that is the horizontal surface. So I was pretty close, but that's because I have a lot of flat surfaces around me to compare with. When you get there, you can measure the strike of that surface. Now, you have two ends to the compass needle, and it just so happens that my surface is basically north-south, so I have zero degrees and 180 degrees. But how do I know which one to record? This is where we use the right-hand rule. Yes, there are many right-hand rules, but in measuring Earth structures, we're gonna use the rule that you always want the downhill side of the dipping plane to be to the right of you or the compass. So if you think of the black needle part of the compass as the nose, when you line it up, if this is the nose, then now I have the surface dipping to the right of the compass. It's to my left, so another way to think about it is if it's dipping to your left, turn the compass around so it's pointing at you instead of away from you. Okay, so now that I have it oriented correctly, which needle do I read? All right, we're, uh, on this compass, we're going to use the white side. Some of them have a red and black, or a red and white, or a black and white. It's a good idea to figure out which one points north, somewhere where you know which way north is before you get started making measurements. So this one's the one that points north, so that's the one that's gonna tell us the orientation of the plane which uh, when I get this bubble leveled again, it's not exactly 180 actually, it's 175. So um, this Brunton has 360 degrees, we call that an azimuthal, and so you would record in right hand rule a strike of 175. The other number dip measures the angle from horizontal so to do that, you're going to use these half circle uh, tick marks on the inside and the cylindrical bubble level. And that is controlled by a little arm on the back, which you can move. So what you're going to do is find the line perpendicular to the strike you just measured. So that's your dip line, strike, dip. And <clears throat> lay your compass down on that line. It doesn't matter whether you lay it with the nose down or the nose up, but I find that if you lay it so that the smiley face is right side up or, or this curved uh, cir uh, half circle is on the bottom half of the Brunton, then that's how it works. So let's say that you were doing it this way, in, uh, which is gonna have it upside down, you can just flip it like that and then read the up from the other side. So remember, you've got a lot of directions you can rotate this to get that right, but you always want it to be straight down that surface. And then you're going to, uh, you're going to level the bubble in the cylinder there. And once you've done that, you can read 50 degrees. So the dip angle is 50 degrees there. So that's an angle of dip from horizontal. So from here, angled down, you could also measure that with a protractor if you had a perfect horizontal plane to use. Um, but the Brunton does that for you again, 
by controlling the arm on the back to move this cylindrical bubble level. So we have a strike of 175, a dip of 50. And it's uh, when you're first starting out with right hand rule, it's a good idea to also measure which direction the dip is. Technically, it should be 90 degrees from the strike, so it'll it'll be uh, 90 degrees from 175. But since sometimes we don't always get right hand rule right, you also want to say the direction of dip. So the easiest way to do that is to simply point the Brunton in the direction the dip is dipping and read. And I've got roughly very close to 270, so that's basically west. North is zero, east is 90, south is 180, west is 270. So if you're between 270 and 180, you'd be southwest. Okay, so that uh, direction, the dip direction, should be a uh, letter, not a number. So that's basically how you use the Brunton. Um, you want to remember that when you're measuring strike, you have to hold the Brunton horizontal. It doesn't work if you lay it on the surface. It doesn't work if you hit it perpendicular to the surface. Only this bottom edge is going to touch that surface, and so you want to get it nice and parallel. When you're doing dip, the whole side is on the surface and it has to be straight down, perpendicular to your strike, the steepest angle you can get on that surface. One other tip, if you're measuring in the field, you aren't always gonna get a nice flat surface, so it's good to have a sturdy notebook around so that you can lay it on the surface or use it to project the surface out from a wall in order to measure the rock surface. So that's the basics of the Bruntons. Let us know if you have questions and you'll get to practice it soon.